A year ago in Japan, a huge tsunami triggered a major nuclear tragedy when it hit the Fukushima power plant, leaving about 19,000 dead or missing. And on the first anniversary, thousands around the world gathered to protest against the use of atomic energy. Demonstrators in South Korea and France were calling for atomic power to be phased out. And in Japan, mourners gathered in the city of Sendai in remembrance of the disaster and to discuss what's being achieved a year after the tragedy we're now joined live from Vermont by Arnold Gunderson, his energy advisor at Fairwinds Associates. Uh, very warm welcome to the program. So w there are reports that even though the plant is now shut down, fusion products such as uranium are still generating heat. So what is the status of the plant right now and the nearby city? Good morning and thanks for having me. Um, the, the heat is being generated and will be generated for years to come, not from fission, but from the splitting of the atoms that occurred in years past. All those atoms are, are still radioactive, and as they decay, they're going to generate heat for, for many years to come. There's contamination out um, at, at least 30 kilometers, and in some areas, um, perhaps as high as 60 kilometers, where people should not ever return. In addition, I was just in, um, in Tokyo and, um, and took five samples, and those five samples were high enough to qualify as radioactive waste here in North America. So it means that you do admit that there are, that there are some problems. Does that mean that the government is uh, undisclosing some, some facts from, from people, and why so? I think the government has been slow to disclose facts ever since the accident occurred. There's um, clearly the cleanup is going to cost around a half a trillion dollars U.S. And that's not just for the site, but for the prefecture of Fukushima as well. But the contamination goes well beyond um, the, the prefecture. Like I said, I picked it up in Tokyo, and that's uh, 250 kilometers away. The uh, entire north of the country has a public health hazard here because everyone is exposed to uh, radioactive cesium, radioactive strontium, and other isotopes. Uh, we know the UN Atomic Energy Chief has said that meaningful steps have been taken to strengthen global nuclear safety since Fukushima, while Greenpeace says no lessons have been learned. Uh, what's your take? I co-authored the Greenpeace um, um, report, and I agree that no lessons have been learned so far. Um, the um, in America, we're just now getting around to finishing the preliminary studies, but we're allowing these plants to continue running until 2016 before they even make any modifications. So we really haven't learned the serious lessons that Fukushima has taught us worldwide. Yeah, and just to prove your words, according to the World Nuclear Association, more than 60 reactors are being built in 15 countries, all forging ahead with nuclear power. So why hasn't the specter of Fukushima at least slowed down that growth rate? Well, it actually has slowed down the growth rate. Mm. There were only two new plants started last year. Um, and before that, there were you know, dozens in the last several years. So clearly countries are having second thoughts. Um, my biggest concern are the, um, are the developing countries where there's a really close relationship between the people that own the power plant and the supposed regulators, even closer than it was in Japan. So I, I think uh, we have many accidents waiting to happen in, um, uh, throughout the world. Fukushima was, um, was not a one-of-a-kind phenomenon. All right, Arnold. Gunderson, Energy Advisor at Fairwinds Associates. Thank you very much indeed for sharing your views with us, sir. Thank you.